Okay, so just before we get into episode 7, I want to give myself a little shout out. Um, I have a gaming channel, which some of you may not have been aware of, where I play horse games because I'm such a big of a horse lover, that's for sure. And one of the first games I played was the Saddle Club Bullerbrook Stables, and I just thought, it's a fun game, I loved playing it, it's my favourite game since I was a child, like I don't know anyone who didn't enjoy the Saddle Club Bullerbrook Stables. Now on my channel I only ever played it as Carol, I haven't replayed it since, but I thought if you guys wanted to go over and show my channel some love, I'm considering to replay as either uh, Lisa or Stevie, so yeah, if you want to go show some love on um, my gaming channel, I'll have it linked down below. If you can go show it some love, I will play the Saddle Club Bullet Book Stables again. Um, but I just didn't think there was any point if I didn't have a big audience of love and support, so I thought I would test it over here first. Um, but yeah, we're up to episode 7 now, and I thought I wouldn't wait any more and jump straight into it. We're gonna crush you in the flag and barrel race. <laughs> in your dreams, Stevie. Crush candy's gonna lick pine hollow hollow. Oh, please. <laughs> what a nice play on words. How long had he had that one in his back pocket? <laughs> Doing anything Friday night? Who knows? Might go see a movie. <clears throat> well, I'm seeing that new band, Rocket Juice. Got two tickets, actually. <laughs> yeah, I just bought two tickets. There was a two-for-one sale, so I just thought I'd get them, you know. If I don't do anything with, with them, they're going to the bin. What do you want to do? <laughs> what do you say? About what? Just thinking, if you weren't doing anything else, I will... Go to see Rocket Juice? Yeah. With you? Yeah, if you like. Or, you know, I can just give you the other ticket and you can go with somebody else, you know. It doesn't bother me. So, do you want to come or not? Sure, I'll come. <laughs> How can I have the curry comb? Yeah, because you know I was too lazy to just reach over there and grab it myself. I had to ask you first. You know, go out of your way. I had I have visible reach for the curry comb, but I just had to ask you first. <laughs> it's not like the grooming kit was on the other side and Carol could pass it to her. Lisa had visible view to get the curry comb. Thanks. Guys, guys, you'll never guess. What? I got us to rocket juice. Rocket juice, huge! And you're going with Phil? Yep. Phil asked you out on a real date. I mean, to be fair, I don't think Stevie's ever been out, asked out on a fake date. Yeah, I guess. Oh, no. Who cares about rocket juice? Boring. Listen to little Miss Green Eyes. Oh, and just look at Mr. Heartache. Can't even stay in the saddle. Oh no, what happened? He threw a shoe. I won't be able to ride him home. Well, he can stay here. I'll look after him. Phil was planning to ride Teddy home. Now, we all know Phil lives up in the mountains where the mountain trail was. They used their land. He lives all the way up there. And they took some time to get there. So he must live about, you know, anywhere between half an hour and an hour away. That poor horse, you know, it's not like his mum was meeting him halfway. He was planning to ride his horse home. But how can I keep him in training for the competition? Oh, right. So I guess that'll be your excuse when you with your butts. No way. <laughs> she has no idea about boars. <laughs> That's the type of outfit I was talking about when Dorothea come to the stables. If she was coming and wasn't planning to do riding, that's the type of outfit I would potentially want to see her, her wearing. But when she walked into the stables, not aware Hugo was there, she's wearing her jotties and horse riding get up, which isn't comfortable loungewear. So if she wasn't planning to do horse riding, why did she even bring her jotties to begin with? She should have just bought more of that. That is smart casual and it is the type of presentable 
attire I wouldn't I expect to see her wear. So it just always frustrated me. If she wasn't planning to do horse riding, because she physically couldn't get she could physically and emotionally couldn't get back up on a horse. But yet she she brought her jotties with her <laughs> and her riding boots and all that. Um but but yeah, we can clearly see that she does have casual attire. <laughs> Stevie being the biggest tomboy you've ever seen, you'd find it hard to believe that she'd actually have that stuff in her wardrobe. Like, she's obviously grown a lot since season one and two, so she's obviously gone shopping. And it just surprises me that she would go into the shop and be like, oh yeah, that's the outfit I want. Because, you know, I have friends who are tomboys. I had friends who are tomboys in, in primary school and high school. And just the thought of looking girly with florals and nice pastel colours freaked them out. <laughs> yes, Stevie might like to have one nice outfit in her wardrobe. I find it hard to believe that these are the outfits she would go choose. Like, you can look nice while being tomboyish stylish, if that makes sense. Carol, how are you doing? Hi. Do I know you? Not yet, but uh, hey, might be your lucky day. So you're right, huh? Yeah. So are you any good? Yeah, actually, I'm very good. Yeah, I like a girl with an ego. I find that just so condescending. Like, not enough to say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm all right. Just, I'm very good. He's right. She's got a big ego. She's trying to put herself above someone else. I only get one chance at her good first impression. She's got no idea who this boy is. She's just assuming what she's assuming. <laughs> and yeah, you never know who you're going to meet. So, who are you, and how do you know me? It's a small world. There you are. <laughs> Sorry we're late. So, this is Carol. I've really been looking forward to meeting this you. This is Dane. <laughs> She's lovely. Mm. Just as I thought you would be. Oh, and I see you've met Murray. Murray? Yes. Yeah, so she said it as if like, she didn't see Murray the first time coming through. It's just like, oh, oh, you met Murray. It wasn't like, oh, Murray, you, you met Carol. She said it as if she just saw Murray standing there for the first time. Where's your sense of surrounding? <laughs> like, clearly, he, you can't miss him. <laughs> he would have the first thing you see when you walked in the door. <laughs> I have an accident. And it is still in here. You understand this better than anybody else. I had a special horse once. And we're reliving season one. Don't you just love it when they cross back to season one stories? I know it's such an American thing, I know. I know the books were written by an American and they went off the design of the American author. But just being in Australia, horses aren't kept in stables and every time I see this happening at night, it just annoys me. And I questioned that to my sister, I was like, but horses aren't kept in stables. And she said, yeah, it's a very American thing to do to have horses in stables. Horses are kept in, in paddocks. <laughs> Okay, I know filming on a show like The Saddle Club might have had a small budget. I respect that. However, this fall was meant to have happened in France. They couldn't have made the scenery, the jumps, or anything look different to Pine Hollow. Clearly we can see that the Pine Hollow jumps, the Pine Hollow background, and the Pine Hollow ring. We can tell that this is happening and filmed at Pine Hollow. You couldn't have just taken her to just a different scenery to film this scene so it didn't look like Pine Hollow and made it look like she was in France competing when she had her fall. Because clearly when I see this fall, I see it happening yesterday that she was trying to ride Hugo and had an accident. I don't see this happening way back in the past, two, three years ago. I see it happening yesterday because all I see is Pine Hollow. I can't see this background as the French National Championships. And that annoys me. But small budget. And I don't understand people who sleep with their curtains open. Like, shut your curtains. Just, oh, it takes three seconds. Just shut your curtains. Unbelievable. And he looks me up and down and goes, are you any good? What kind of creep is that? 
and all this time he knows who I am, and I don't know who he is. Well, to be fair, Whitney spends a lot of time with her son and has relayed a lot to her son about Carol and her personality, so when he meets her, he knows it enough to have a conversation with her. Obviously, your dad has been working a lot of night shifts and you've been here during the day and haven't been able to communicate with your dad. That is why. It's no other reason to that he's looked you up on the internet. Not that 2002 had much to show for it. But because Whitney obviously talks to her son. Obviously, your dad is working night shifts and you're here during the day. You haven't had time to communicate. No other reason for that. It's just Whitney wanted to make sure her son knew a bit before meeting you. Until Dad and Whitney show up, and it's her son. And this might be your stepbrother? Ugh. Dad wouldn't, would he? <clears throat> You'll be fine. Just trust your horse. See, I told you. Remember that episode when she hops on Hugo for the first time and I said there's no way he got up without a, a lift or a boost? That is what I'm talking about. She needs a leg up. That horse is huge. And when I saw her get up on Hugo for the first time, I was like, there's no way he got up without a, a booster of some kind. And that is just proof that she can't get up on her own because that horse is so big. It was nothing against, like, if you can, well done to you. You've got incredible, you know, leg strength and quads. But I could just tell with her being similar height to me and that horse being 17 hand maybe 16 17 hand that there was no way she could get up without support and this just proves it that she needed some kind of leg up oh there's no shame in needing a boost i needed a boost for my horse he was 15 hand no shame in that Gonna try the jumps? Yep. Okay, if you had a terrible fall, which I have had, well, can't say it was traumatic, I got back up as soon as I could. I didn't start jumping insanely big, I started small, got a bit of confidence, tried another level, got. Co I didn't just go try the Olympic levels again, I made myself work up to confidence. You wouldn't push someone who's had a big traumatic fall and force her to go back to the level she once was. That's not how recovery works. They put Belle back in the stall, but as we just saw, Belle pushed open the bolts and they're not going to be able to lock the door again. They should have moved her somewhere else because locking that door is not going to do anything, seeming the bolt has been broken off now. At least you changed. That's mud, not manure. There is a big difference in the consistency with manure and mud. and. Anyone who works in the horse industry or knows anything about horses will tell you that ain't nothing like manure. That is clearly mud. They could have even made it look slightly like manure. Here, you've got your other clothes to wear. Lisa, that's Veronica's stuff. Full stay, I love them more. Okay, and this is what really pisses me off about the Sutter Club is we were all like, oh, the Sutter Club are always right, you know, Sutter Club always did the right thing. What Lisa is doing is stealing. If someone went through my bag and used the excuse, all fair, love and war, I would be pretty pissed off. That is my personal belonging, and as Carol and Stevie have had experiences with, touching other people's personal belongings ain't something you do. You know, it doesn't matter what Veronica does to you in the past. That is Veronica's personal stuff. And I'm pretty sure Lisa would crack the shits too if Veronica went and touched her stuff and used it and used the excuses all spare love and wool because that's not a good enough excuse, unfortunately. It is Veronica's personal stuff. You do not touch it. You would be pissed off too if someone touched your stuff. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Some people were not taught that saying at school and it shows. These three clearly weren't. Carol and Stevie have 
uh, Carol Stevie have done it to Veronica stuff and now Lisa's doing it. They know better than Veronica. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could get ready in no time. Well, thanks, Veronica. But... Okay, we just saw Carol pull out that stuff out of Stevie's bag. I highly doubt that Stevie's casual wear. I mean, they look like pretty nice jeans and a top. That wouldn't be my casual wear if I was riding, if I was going somewhere after horse riding. But, you know, we know they're Stevie's clothes. Carol pulled them out of her bag. But that doesn't look like the type of clothing Stevie would wear after horse riding. <laughs> Like this. Go ride it for you. You don't know the horse. Oh, don't sweat it. We'll be fine. As if that's your biggest concern. There are some people. Clearly, he knows a thing or two about horse riding. Just by the way, he's jumped up on that horse. Not knowing the horse isn't that big of an issue. Like I'm sure on your first riding day, you didn't know the horse, but yet you were put on it anyway. That's not really the excuse I'd be saying. I'd be saying, well, do you even know how to ride a horse? Which clearly, he he does. You can see that straight away by the way he's acting around horses and the way he can connect with them. But the, the first question I would say is you don't even know the horse isn't really the question I'd be saying to him. Okay Stevie, moments of truth. It's gonna hurt, Val. Let's go! Come on, Val, come on! To be fair, if I wanted my horse to go, I wouldn't be pulling back on the rein saying, come on, move, let's go, oh my god, we gotta go. Because that's sending mixed messages. I would be trying to kick the horse and give them rein instead of pulling it back saying, let's go, come on. That would be like me getting into a car and keep pulling up the handbrake saying like, you're going to drive, you're going to drive, come on, we, we, we got to drive, and me pulling up the handbrake. You're sending mixed messages to this horse. Don't pull back on the reins if you want them to go. No, Mum thinks I need to change the scene. They seem to be getting on. Just like their parents. Why don't we just try and get along? Why would I even bother? Because my mum's going away on business and I'm going to be staying with you. Oh, Shania. Another episode done and dusted. If you did like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and also please do subscribe for more. And please, please, please sign the petition that I have linked in the description box below. If you are a massive fan of the Saddle Club, you will know that many songs from season two went unreleased and two whole albums from season three went unreleased. To me, that just breaks my heart because why would they even record these songs if they didn't want anyone to hear them? So I'm trying my best and 14 others thankfully have responded and sharing it on their social medias and I'm thankful for that. Just if we can bring it to the music producers, the show producers, show runners, the cast, anyone who has access to these songs to release them that would be great because there is one song that is played in season two which I'm happy to point out once we come to it that is in an episode that doesn't even get released and that breaks my heart. So if we could all band together and I don't know if anyone knows anyone from the show who might be able to bring it to their attentions but if you can that would be a massive help for me and 14 other people. See what we can do, it just takes one person to change the world. So if we can do that, yay to us. And I will see you next time in the next episode. Bye guys.